A warm welcome again and Sushrut and I now continue our discussion. So, first I need to complete my answer to Sushrut's question about commutativity and associativity. Let me talk about associativity now. Let us first understand the meaning of associativity. Associativity as the name suggests means what association we make out of three systems, there may need to be at least three systems. So, I have three systems one after the other. Now, I could either associate these two systems together and then let them operate on S 1, on the output of S 1 or I could associate S 1 and S 2 together and let them operate on S 3. That is let the output of these be fed into S 3. This is what associate, associativity says that it does not make a difference if S 1, S 2, S 3 are all linear shift invariant systems, if all S 1, S 2, S 3 are linear shift invariant, then this makes no difference. Now, physically what would it mean? It would essentially mean that you know you could have two systems of one kind and one system of another. So, you could do very well. See, in fact, you also might have the flexibility. So, I gave you this business of you know, so th there is an at the abstraction level S 1, S 2, S 3 have the same meaning, but at, a, at an implementational level you may have the choice to implement S 2 either in one domain say the mechanical domain or the electrical domain or maybe the hydraulic domain. You know, I am just giving you an example of physical situations where in the from the same abstraction you could have different realizations. Now, what associativity says is depending on your convenience, you might choose to put two systems into one domain and the third system into another, right. So, you could put S 1, S 2 into one kind of a domain, a mechanical domain S 3 into another or S 2 and S 3 into one kind of domain and S 1 in an, into another. And that so, the way you make these associations, if you keep the order the same, has no effect on the input output relationship. Now, when you put commutativity and associativity together, you get something very interesting. And I think I have also indicated this as an exercise for the class. I have said that you can then prove by induction that any reordering, any permutation of the systems leaves the overall relationship unaffected. Now, for two systems, this is trivial, this happens on account of commutativity. For three systems, one can use a combination of commutativity and associativity and prove it. And then for more than three systems, you, you, you need to use mathematical induction. And in fact, let us encourage all our viewers to do that. Use mathematical induction to prove formally. You know, those of you who are fond of formal proofs, it will be an interesting thing to do. Use commutativity and associativity together to show that any or any permutation of systems, LSI systems in cascade leaves the input output relationship unaffected. Good, Sushrut. So, do you have any other questions? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, we uh, talked about uh, the condition for stability, and uh, while uh, we got the condition that uh, the impulse uh, response must have a finite uh, uh, absolute, absolute sum, sum or, or absolute, absolute integra integra integration. Very cool. Uh, while proving that this condition is necessary, we gave a special input uh, to the system. Yes. So. Uh, can we logically possibly arrive at that input because uh, I mean it works out fine, but uh, sometimes how did, we, huh? how did we make that choice? You know, huh. yeah, we talk. That's a good question. So what we we said we talked about a troublesome input, isn't it? We, I think that's the term we used. A troublemaking input to the system, isn't it? I think I don't know whether I talked. I think I talked about that man who knew many languages in the yes, video. Yes, yes, yes. I talked about him. You know. So the, person who used to create trouble. So, the trouble making input to the system. So, how did we arrive at this trouble making input? You see, let us look at the input output relationship, you see. So, we said that the output, let us take say discrete time first, that is easier to understand. So, y of n is summation k going from minus to plus infinity x k h n minus k, where h n is the impulse response or vice versa. Now, you know the way we arrived at that input was 
to try and force y n to be bounded in spite of trying to bring in an absolute sum here. So, what we were trying to do is we tried to force an absolute sum here and still hold y as bounded. Now, how can you force an absolute sum here? You need to do two things. You see, you need to somehow take care of that x is a product there. So, you know, if you want to force an absolute sum, you want the output to depend only on the impulse response. So, how do you do it? By trying to keep an input which is essentially 1 or 0 in magnitude. You see, you want to keep an input because you do not want the input to create a change in magnitude. So, how do you? So, you know, what we needed was we needed to use an input either 1 or 0 in magnitude. So, let us look at that equation again. So, we said y of n is summation over k all k h k x n minus k. And you know it does not matter what n we choose, so we might as well choose y of 0, because the same construction can be used for any other n, it is shift invariant anyway. Let us make life simple. Now, here how do we make this input 1 in magnitude. So, to make it 1 in magnitude, essentially you need to look at the and you want, want to make it 1 in magnitude and you want to remove, see you want to make a modulus here. So, what you need to do is to remove the angle of this, that is what we did. So, we said put x of minus k equal to h of k divided by mod or rather h conjugate of k divided by mod h k if h k is not 0 for that particular k and then is equal to 0 else because you cannot divide by mod h k otherwise you see. So, when you did this you had a you had an input which was essentially 1 in magnitude whenever the corresponding impulse response term was not 0 and when the impulse response term was 0 you let it pass as it is you do not have to worry about it anyway. So, you can just make the input 0 at that in fact you could have made the input anything you like at that point it would not have mattered you see, but you could as well make the input well you you know if you made the input anything you like at that point then you have to ensure the input is bounded. So, instead of make life simple make it 0. So, you are assured that you do not have to worry about those points at all right. So, you assure a bounded input by ensuring the bound is 1 and that bounded input is troublesome because it forces that y of 0 to become the absolute sum that is the idea. The same idea can be carried to the continuous time context. So, I guess you know there must be many other questions which all of you have. Sushrut has just sort of touched some of the questions which all of you must be having. I am sure you must send your questions to us and Sushrut will come again in some subsequent discussions to tell us more about what he thinks should be explained better. Thank you so much.